How's it going? Xander Fryer with Shit You Don't Learn in College, and today we're gonna go over the three things you need to escape the nine to five ASAP. Everybody thought I'd lost it when I quit my nine to five. My friends thought I was crazy. My mom even hung up on me when I called her and told her that I was quitting a job where I made over $200,000 a year to go after a risky idea that had no proven concept. Everybody thought I'd lost it. But the truth was I knew deep down that I needed to do it. Now, when I first quit the nine to five, I truly believed that everybody could be an entrepreneur. They just needed to have the desire, the blueprints, and have the willingness to go make it happen. But ever since building my business, I've come to realize that not everybody is meant to leave the nine to five world. And that's just the truth. So what you need to understand, if you want to leave the nine to five world, there's three things that you must have to be able to do it. And if you can't do these three things, it might not be for you. The first thing that you need to leave the nine to five world is clarity. You need to know what it is that you're actually going to do. The way that I always explain this to people is, I'm here in San Diego right now, and could you imagine if I was in San Diego and I wanted to sail to, let's say, Japan, right? Now, if I wanted to build a boat and sail to Japan, would it make sense for me to quit my job and then start building the boat and then go sail to Japan? Or should I build the boat while I'm still in a nine to five job, while I'm making great money and I've got the capital and I've got the income to support putting together this boat? And then once I quit, I can actually go sail it to Japan. So this is the first thing that you need. You need clarity around what you're actually gonna do when you quit your nine to five so that you can go make money and you won't freak out and fall back into another nine to five just because you couldn't figure out how to make it work. So number one, you gotta get clarity. Now in order to do this, you need to find mentorship or somebody who's done what it is that you want to do and have them help you, have them give you the recipe and have them figure out what it's actually going to take for you because you really need to understand what it's gonna take so you can figure out if it'll work for you. You need to learn whether or not you're gonna be somebody that can handle the pressure and can do what's gonna be expected of you or if you're gonna freeze and crumble and go back to the nine to five world. Now the second thing that you need to escape the nine to five and actually make it as an entrepreneur is the right mindset. Now Tony Robbins once said that 99% of your success is the space between your ears. In the information age, we have all the tactics, the strategies, the, the tools, everything that you could ever need is out there on the interwebs. But the differentiator between somebody who's successful and somebody who's not, this right here. So there's three beliefs that I need you to make sure that you have if you're going to escape the nine to five. The first thing I want you to understand is nine to fives are kind of like flat ground. They're stable, they're comfortable, but for a lot of people they're monotonous and a little bit boring. This is why so many people crave more, they crave adventure, they crave something bigger, something, something grander. Entrepreneurship, is like being on a boat in the middle of the ocean. Have you ever been on a boat in the middle of the ocean? If you've never been on a boat in the middle of the ocean, the first time you get on one, it's sickening. It's rough, it's rocky, it's uh, you're all over the place. It's really uncomfortable. And the first time you do it, you almost wanna get off of the boat and get back on dry land immediately. But what happens if you stay on this boat? What happens if you stay on that boat for a few days or maybe even a week? You start to get your sea legs you start to get comfortable in the uncomfortable. And then once you've been on that boat for a while and you have your sea legs, what happens if you go back to dry land? Dry land feels weird. You feel wobbly on dry land. This is the same thing with entrepreneurship. Entrepreneurship is gonna be rough, it's gonna be rocky, it's gonna be wobbly, it's gonna make you wanna throw up for probably the first six to 12 months that you do it. But the longer you do it, the more comfortable you get with it and the easier it is for you and eventually, you can never go back to a nine to five. That's the first mindset shift that you have to have. Now the second mindset shift that you have to have is you gotta get comfortable with death. I know this sounds crazy, but I want you to meditate on death. One day, you're gonna die. It's the only certainty in life. Everything in life, uncertain, except for one thing. Eventually, you'll no longer be on this earth. And the sooner that you realize that, the sooner you realize that you only have one life, you only have limited amount of time, and you start to realize that everything that you're actually afraid of in life isn't actually going to kill you. But if you don't start taking the chances and the risks and, and making the courageous decisions and actions that you need to, to live a life with more meaning, more fulfillment, you might as well die tomorrow because you're not actually living. 
And the third mindset shift that I want you to understand is every moment that you live is either on purpose or off purpose. And every moment off purpose is a moment wasted. This is what really triggered me to leave my nine to five job. I had a mentor ask me, he said, Xander, why are you still in the corporate world? I said, well, I'm making great money. And he said, just because you've got a path in front of you, does that mean you should follow it? Just because you're good at something, does that mean you should do it? He said, Xander, do you feel like you're on purpose right now? Do you feel like your life is on purpose? And I said, not fully, but maybe I'll get there eventually. He said, Xander, if there's one lesson that I've ever learned getting older, it's that every moment is either on purpose or off purpose. And every moment off purpose is a moment wasted because we don't have a ton of time in this life. So you're gonna wanna start to use your time wisely. That is a huge mental shift for everybody. And the sooner you start to use your time wisely and live on purpose, you'll realize that nine to five, probably not for you. And the last thing that I tell people that they need in order to quit the nine to five is enough money to buy back your time. Now at this point, I've probably helped over 150 people leave their nine to fives and build businesses where they can, they can coach and provide services full time, impacting lives, changing the world and having a ton of freedom because of it. But the very beginning of it is you have to have enough money to buy back your time, the one resource you can never get back. One of our clients, Josiah, was in a nine to five job because he was making around 10K a month and he needed it to support his wife and their two sons. Without that money, he could not pursue anything faster and further in his purpose because he had other responsibilities. So the first thing that we had to do with Josiah is we had to get him to the point where he had saved up three months worth of living expenses. Three months of living expenses and a business idea that's proven that you can actually make an income from, that's all you need to be able to quit the nine to five. With Josiah, when we finally were able to help him quit his nine to five, as soon as he quit, that's buying back his time and he can invest all that time and all that focus and all that energy into the new business. And within the next month or two, he was already making 15, 20 K a month. That's all because he saved up and he bought back his time. Now, if you don't have a business idea, you're gonna wanna save up at least six months of living expenses because you're gonna have to spend some time, you're gonna have, have to invest some money and some focus to actually figure out what that business idea is so that you can actually get there without having to go back to a nine to five. So really, those are the three things that you need to be able to escape the nine to five as soon as possible. But before you do this, I wanna make sure that you're the right person to do this. So, I want you to think about this question very carefully before you consider quitting your nine to five. When you get put under pressure, when you get put in a tough spot, when you get stuck in a corner, do you step up or do you crumble? Because the reality is, when you become an entrepreneur, all the pressure is gonna be on you. Now, pressure is a privilege. Pressure can either create diamonds or it can cause pipes to burst. So you need to get clear. Are you the type of person that steps up or are you the type of person that crumbles? So really, those are the three things that you need to be able to quit the nine to five. Number one, you gotta get clarity around where you're actually going because without clarity, you're gonna be running around in circles without any idea. Number two, you're gonna have to make some major shifts to your mindset. I'll tell you, as someone who is successful in a nine to five, I had to completely change who I was as a person to be successful as an entrepreneur. And number three, there's no way around it. You're gonna have to have enough money, either enough money saved up or enough money on credit cards or enough money coming in as income to be able to buy back your time and get your energy and your focus on building a business that can sustain you moving forward so you don't have to be in that nine to five place. But before you go quitting your nine to five, I wanna ask you one really important question because this question may make or break whether or not you're actually ready to do this. Now, when the pressure gets put on you, do you rise up? or do you crumble? Are you someone that steps up when you're under stress and demand or are you someone that backs off and retreats? Because the reality is, as an entrepreneur, if you're not someone who steps into the fire, who moves forward when things get tough, who steps up when the pressure is on you, you're not gonna be able to succeed. So you need to know deep in your heart whether or not you're gonna be able to step up. Because if you're not that person, it's never gonna work for you. But if you are that person, Pressure can burst pipes or it can create diamonds. So let's go be that diamond. If you enjoyed this video, go ahead and like this video below to let me know that you enjoyed it. And if you have any specific topics that you want me to teach on, go ahead and ask them in the comments and I'll make sure to get them in one of our next videos. And don't forget to subscribe to our channel so you never miss another great video.